today we're looking at the democratization of motoring, the cars that brought mobility to the masses and put the world on wheels. We have shortlisted four of the most iconic designs, the Ford Model T, the Land Rover, the Fiat 500 and the Ford Mustang. Your task, gentlemen, is to explore what made them such icons and the impact of these designs that had on the world. What is your opinion on this iconic car, the Ford Model T? This was really the shock of the new. It may look antique to us now, but at the time it must have been cutting edge, it must have been like space travel. It heralded in the industrial age. I mean, in the time of its production, it was responsible for 40% of the cars sold in America. And if you imagine, that midway in its evolution, the production line came in. So this was really the birth of the modern age. When you're innovating, you don't have a lot of terms of reference. And it's very easy, I think, from, you know, from, from where we sit today. So many of these things seem obvious, um, but they weren't. And I think there, there would have been so many problems that would have required remarkable um, invention and curiosity and, and, and resolve that you're just not, not aware of. On, for example, the production line. When you start to make things in volume, you get into this whole area of, of, of quality control. Does the Model T inspire you, Mark? Certainly inspires me. Um, you know, I think the, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's sort of banal to discuss the, you know, the aesthetics or the styling, because that simply wasn't probably particularly relevant in the way that it is now. So your design is characterised by organic round shapes. Does the boxy Land Rover offend you? Well, you know, as a Land Rover doesn't offend me at all. In fact, I find, you know, all of the Land Rovers, but starting obviously with the Series 1, um, you know, one of the most iconic modern vehicles. So, you know, I absolutely adore it. I, I find it a really beautiful, a really beautiful car, just because it's so clear. You understand by looking at it immediately what its intention is, what, what it's evolved and what it was designed and developed to do. It's like architecture without architects. Um, it's functional, it's anonymous, and unbelievably, you look at the span of its production, it's 70 years almost. So a remarkable, uh, a remarkable success. Thank you. So we have to move to the Fiat 500, a very, very different car. Johnny, I hear this was the first car you ever drove. What memories do you have? <laughs> um, I, I, I had the, well, I really love this car. Um, it's, um, it's, I mean, it, actually, I mean, it looks, it looks almost like a vacuum forming or a jelly mold, doesn't it? It really, I think it's one of the first very, very intentionally mass produced designs. You get the sense that the design developed and evolved so you could make lots of them. I loved how focused it was in terms of it was great for, um, you know, narrow streets with lots of traffic. Um, and now I, I, I have enormous sort of personal affection and also professional affection. It's the first of a generation of so-called microcars. So it's really doing more with less. It's beautifully petite. It, the, the intensity of the design just makes the simplicity so poetic. That's a beautiful way to summarize it. Mark, what do you think? I think what really fascinates me about this car is how it has gone uh, how it, it went a very long way to, to sort of describing the Italian uh, aesthetic, which, as we know, in the automotive world was, was so profound. But I look at this car and it, it, it just says, it says Italy to me. Certain objects, certain products really do speak volumes to the place of their creation. They, you know, that, the, the, the Fiat 500 could not have come from anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so the Ford Mustang. Are you a fan of muscle cars, Lord Foster? I have a bright red Mustang. <laughs> no, um, you don't. In America. Ah. Uh, so, so, and it has this throaty growl of the, 
of the V8. Um, and as somebody once said, you know, this is a car that looks as, go as though it's going fast when it's stationary. <laughs> yeah. So it's the, you know, one of the ultimate exercises in styling. And it's kind of symbolic of the era. This category was this democratization um, of motoring. I, you know, we're, we're talking about the 60s, but it somehow, I think, made the, the American dream, but that sense of liberty possible. And that's why I think it, you know, assumed the momentum to, to be somehow identified with a lot of the American dream. I think it represents the, you know, the best of American automotive design, not only of the period, but, but, but you know, ever. Gentlemen, we have to wrap up now. It's been a fascinating discussion. So which design is the most significant? Which one would you choose? Oh, I choose the Model T. It was the car that trailblazed the democratization of, of motoring without question. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with, with Norman. And um, I think there were so many problems uh, uh, huge problems that didn't have precedent that were solved to, to, to make this possible. I mean, fundamentally, I agree with uh, both of uh, our other esteemed speakers, although I feel that the, uh, that the Fiat Bambino, um, from a sort of a European perspective, is almost as profound. Thank you so much, guys. So, so we kind of say Model T is the winner here. <laughs>